Good morning, folks. It's a relatively calm period on our star at the moment, but we've got a story about another star that wasn't so calm. We'll also dive into an article about a changing pattern in the atmosphere. We'll begin, as always, with the sun. The last 24 hours had only C-class flares, minor pops and surges in the lower corona, but not much in the way of CME activity. A couple released from the limb, but they were not aimed at Earth. Solar wind is finally calming down from the extended coronal hole stream that we've endured for a few days. And with that, the KP index is dropping as the magnetic field settles back after a somewhat turbulent last 10 days. We'll be keeping our eyes on the plasma filaments and the few active regions in case eruptive activity returns. Let's go next to seismicity, where I hadn't given much weight to the talk the last few days about the seismic swarm in Southern California. Veteran observers know that people talk about worrying for a West Coast earthquake a lot, but I don't really start paying attention until the swarm increases in magnitude to over magnitude 4. That happened overnight, and yes, now I'm keeping a close eye on the San Andreas Fault. Up next, a star in our galaxy just had a mega flare. This one registered at about an X7000 event which is much stronger than anything our sun can do, and would have utterly demolished pretty much any atmosphere on a planet in its own system. Very happy to report, this event happened very far away. Lastly, folks, an interesting paper on the southern annular mode, a key weather driving force. They say there was no major changes before the 1900s, and that they believe that that means it must be strongly affected by human-caused climate change. But as always with papers like this, they did not study a single thing about the sun or Earth's magnetic field in their analysis. We know from previous works that the sun has a serious impact on both the northern and southern annular mode, which also means that Earth's magnetic field plays a role since it modulates that solar activity interaction. The sun's grand solar maximum of the 20th century, combined with a weaker magnetic field allowing for a greater impact from that activity, would force a positive trend in the mode, and that's precisely what we're seeing. Once again, it's more about what the study intentionally ignores and the observations themselves, rather than their biased and limited conclusion. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.